Spatial locality is the assumption that the results of a measurement made in a particular place can depend only on the state of the world at that place. Uh, so things that have happened you know, elsewhere at the same time can directly influence the result of that measurement. Temporal locality is just the analogue of that for the temporal cases, is that the results of measurements made at a particular time can depend only on the state of the world at that time. It's becoming, I think, more widely accepted that we might have to allow spatially non-local influences into physics, but as soon as we do that, if we don't want to be inconsistent with relativity, if we want to preserve Lorentz invariance, we immediately have to also take seriously the possibility of temporally non-local influences. I also think it was never really a very good assumption to suppose that the laws of nature must kind of look at the world in the same way as we do. We live starting at a time and moving forwards, but it's, it's sort of unreasonably anthropomorphic to suppose that the laws of nature need to work in the same way. There's a number of different ways in which physics might fail to be temporally local, and they're all sort of floating around in various places in modern physics. Uh, for example, it, it could be non-Markovian, uh, meaning that the results of measurements uh, depend not only on information about the past, which is recorded in the present state, but also you know, directly on some other information about the past. Or it could be uh, retrocausal, so the results of a measurement might depend in addition on information about the future. Or perhaps uh, physics could be atemporal, meaning that rather than starting at the beginning and evolving forwards in time, the laws of nature govern the whole of history all at once um, from an external point of view. So the analogy I like to use is to the game of Sudoku. So uh, a game of Sudoku, we have constraints. Those constraints don't start from the left and evolve towards the right. The constraints apply to what the whole grid has to look like. And you can't play the game of Sudoku without looking at the whole thing at once. Monopoly, right? You, you, know, you start, you roll a dice and you move forwards step by step. And the rules tell you what happens next given what has just happened. You don't play Monopoly by putting in initial conditions and final conditions and trying to figure out what must happen in the middle. You start from the beginning and play to the end. Whereas Sudoku, you look at the whole square, you know that the, the final square which you produce has to have certain properties and you figure out how to achieve those properties. One nice example of, of these two frameworks is with uh, like light passing through different types of materials. So, I mean, you can think of, you can describe this in a temporally local way by saying that the, the light uh, travels at a certain speed through a material and, and then it you know, meets different material and it bends and, and it goes in a different way. And so we, we think of the, the passage of the light as being this temporal process that unfolds moment by moment. But there's also an equivalent description where we instead describe the light path by means of, of calculating an action. And the action is a property of the whole path. And we say that the final path, rather than sort of being determined moment by moment, it's determined by just minimising this action and trying to make this, this quantity as small as possible. So that the whole path is chosen at once rather than sort of rolling moment by moment. Temporal locality is already somewhat violated, I think, in many formulations of general relativity. The most natural formulation of, of general relativity is as a temporally non-local theory, because a solution to Einstein's field equations in their sort of standard form is an entire universe rather than being a, a state at a time. What one might regard as the mainstream interpretations of quantum mechanics, so you know, the Bohmian view, spontaneous collapse views, the Everett view, all of these are, at least as I read them, explicitly temporally local in their approaches. Um, you know, which, which certainly raises the possibility that maybe there might be a whole lot of alternative interpretations that are not temporally local that we haven't really explored in any great detail. Some emerging retrocausal interpretations. There's also interpretations which are, have the kind of all-at-once uh, approach that I'm interested in, the sort of universe being solved as a puzzle from the outside. All of these sorts of interpretations are very underexplored and not much has been done with them, and I think there's, there's scope for a lot more to be said about them.